Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome to my rigging channel and another Blender rigging tutorial. Today I want to talk about inverse kinematics and knee pops. And I want to show you a technique that you can use where you can vastly reduce or even eliminate knee popping in your rigs. So with something called soft IK. So on uh, this example right here, on the right leg, which will be on the left side of your screen, I have a normal IK setup. And on this side, the left side, the left side of the character, the right side of your screen, I have um, set up this rigging with uh, soft IK. So what knee pops or what causes knee pops is basically uh, when you are using your controls and the bone chain gets to a straightened position, it's increasingly smaller and smaller movements that will um, actually create uh, cause your knee to speed in the other direction. So and this is actually very jarring in that um, it causes a severe pop. So hopefully you can see the difference between the two. Um, on the left leg, it's got a very smooth, um, even rotation. And on the other one, as soon as you get to a certain point, it'll just like pop straight and then pop back out. So um, let me go to another example here where I have uh, two bone chains sitting on top of each other. And one is set with uh, soft IK and the other is just a normal setup. And the one I have highlighted back here is the normal IK setup. And what I want you to notice is with the very small movement of this foot control, how this will just pop in and then pop back out, where the other one is very smooth and controlled. So, uh, it's actually a pretty simple setup. Let me get back to my dwarf character here. And this is from MB Labs. And I've just uh, created my own um, uh, rig for uh, the MB Labs character just using the uh, uh, deformation bones. Um, that were supplied with it, and that were generated with it. So I'm not actually using the MB Labs inverse kinematics um, rigging here. I've I've created this myself. All right, I just wanted to point that out in case you were. Uh, everything looks different than what uh, uh, his normal setup is. All right, uh, one other thing I want to talk about is I need to give credit to the people at Pitchy Boy Studios for uh, figuring this out. Um, so in a lot of different programs, um, setting up an, a soft IK. Um, takes a kind of a very complex mathematical formula to do that um, if you're using Maya or things like that and what the people at Pitchy Boy Studios did is they figured out a way to do this basically without any um, mathematics whatsoever so uh, you can rejoice in that there's going to be no math involved in this it's a pretty um, slick and ingenious um, solution to it all right so uh, once again I'm not going to go through how to set up an IK um, leg or arm. I'm going to assume that you know how to do that and know the basics of it. But basically what they figured out was if we, if I select the uh, left IK leg here and in introduce a very small stretch value in the inverse kinematics, and you can find this under bone properties, and very, very small stretch value, I'm going to use 0 .001 on the shin here, that will actually even out that rotation. Just adding that uh, super small stretch value um, will really ease that that popping but it does create a new problem that we have to deal with so there's no way to um, uh, fix this stretching in here well there is probably if we use drivers but uh, I'm going to show you a different way um, of how to limit that stretching here and one of the ways we cannot do this because this is being affected by an IK constraint is we can't use a limit scale so if we just put 1.0 here and we were to try to limit the scale. The reason this doesn't work is because this is the way IK constraints um, kind of work in Blender. They're a special constraint in Blender and um, basically um, IK constraints are always evaluated last on the bones in which they affect. And the reason for that is they can affect multiple bones and there's no way for Blender to know um, how many constraints are on each bone really to calculate that. So they're always going to be evaluator last and it doesn't um, rem um, matter where that constraint is in the constraint stack so if we tried to limit it before the IK constraint it really doesn't matter because the IK constraint again is always going to be evaluated last no matter what or if we switch it to try to limit it after like I mentioned it doesn't matter so that's pretty much why um, this uh, if I just get rid of this scale here. This is pretty much why the inverse kinematics panel exists to begin with because you can't use um, constraints to limit um, the rotations or lock axes or things like that. So that is the main reason the inverse kinematics panels e exists. 
because inverse kinematics works uh, or always evaluated last. So the way we're going to fix this, just clear everything out here, is by adding a couple new bones. And I've already done this. So one is going to be a stretching bone. And you can kind of think of this as the bone that goes from the top of your bone chain to the end of your bone chain. And we're just going to limit the amount of stretching that happens on that bone. And then we're going to add a new bone down at the end of that stretching, basically to track the tail position. So on the stretching bone, if we go to our bone constraints, I've added a stretch to constraint, and it is stretching to the foot IK dot here. That is this red bone down here. And then we're limiting the local space um, Y axis to 1.03. Now this number right here is going to be something that you're going to need to fiddle with. Uh, 1.03 is what works for uh, uh, my setup right here. You might um, I've found values of 1.02 to 1.05 to be uh, pretty good. But basically what's going to determine the value you use is um, you want to allow that bone to stretch so you or your IK bones will um, be able to straighten out. So if you use too small of a value, you, your bone, your IK bones will never um, completely um, straighten. All right. So the next bone, after we have added our stretch to constraint and then limited the the amount of um, scaling that'll happen, this is the I've called it MCH ankle. It is actually parented to our IK foot controller. So it's going to inherit the location and rotation and scale of that controller. But next, we are going to add a new copy location so we can copy the tail position of the stretch bone. So by default, when you add a copy location, it's going to come in at the head position. So you want to make sure that you slide this over to tail. And it can be world space for this. And next, this is going to be the new IK um, target for our IK, uh, for the IK constraint. So currently, I have it at foot IK, which is this red bone. We want to have it target this instead. So control C and we'll go back to IK constraint, control V, paste that in, and that is it. We should have a working soft IK leg here. And why is that oh I've turned off that uh influence here on this limit scale. Alright. So there it is. That is a soft IK setup. Now um if you've got a very simple rig, this is a very simple setup. Um it gets more complex as you want to add more features to your um, to your rig. So let me just go through a few of those things you might run into. So on this uh, left leg over here, I've added a custom property called IK stretch. Now, when you're most of your realistic characters, you don't want your legs to stretch. So, uh, but if you're doing a car cartoony character, you may want to um, actually allow that stretching. So with this, I have a property where I can turn that on and then that leg will now uh, stretch with that and we see didn't I turn it all the way on yep 1.0 all right that's why it was weird so for cartoony character you'd want to you might want to be able to uh, turn this on or off now basically um, this custom property all it's doing is turning um, uh, the limit scale on and off. So I've added a driver to the influence of the limit scale. So when I don't want it to stretch, I want the limit scale on. And when I do want it to stretch, I just turn that influence off. So basically, this custom property is just turning that influence um, when it's on 1.0, the um, constraint will be at zero. And when it, we turn it back off, that constraint will be on. So let me just turn this on. And I want to show you another thing we're going to run into. Um, I'm going to turn this one off by hand on this side and then you can see another issue you'll have to r have to deal with so you'll notice that we've got some really weird scaling going on here now I mentioned before that I'm using the MB labs so here are the actual deformation bones for this rig and then I'm just copying the transforms across uh, from our actual um, IK bones which I have on a different layer here so something that also happens when you're using stretch on your IK is there's no way in the inverse kinematics panel to um, uh, limit the uh, axes, the stretching axes, or the scaling. They bas they basically, the further they scale, the, the larger those bones will get. And obviously, we don't want that. It's going to look really weird. So uh, what I've done in this situation is 
hope I get my um, actual deformation bones visible here, is I want to copy the location and the rotation from our IK bones, but I don't well, I want to copy the scale values in a different manner. So what I've done on the actual deformation bones is I've copied the location of the thigh and copied the rotation of that thigh, but then I'm stretching using the stretch do constraint to stretch that bone to the shin and that allows me to use some volume preservation here. So basically what's happening here is the the further this um, scales or stretches on its y-axis, the more it will shrink in on the x and z to uh, create that volume preservation. Now on this side over here, I don't have that set up. I've just used a simple copy transforms and that's why I'm getting those really weird results because it's copying it directly from this IK bone, which is uh, um, getting larger and larger as it stretches instead of uh, maintaining its volume here. So those are a few things that you can run into. Um, you can add this into um, a rig with a uh, more advanced um, foot roll can set up. So here I have a, a foot roll control on this one. Now I'm not going to go through on how to create all this, uh, the foot roll control. If you're interested in that, um, how to create a foot roll control for your IK um, feet, because it's very, they're very useful for making walks and runs and things of that nature. Um, please give me a comment in the comment section. And uh, I don't ever like to promise anything, but if I get enough um, interest in it, I can go ahead and show you how to set that up. So I hope this um, soft IK setup can really help you. Um, you get it basically for free. You can use it for free if you're uh, uh, using Rigify, but if you want to create this yourself, it's actually a pretty simple setup. So it'll vastly reduce the amount of knee pops in your rigs, and it'll make your animations a lot easier. So I hope it helps you. Until next time, good luck.